We've done three. Uh, three values here. Remember I asked you just now? Make the table. Do four across. I actually have more values here than I need. Because if I've got four values here, I only really need two to make the straight line. So I'm just going to go for three somewhere in the middle. I'm going to compare two quantities. Number of years that I've been investing, uh, or number of years I've had money to make here. And then, I should actually say balance. You can say either. They're fine. Amount or balance. Now, we can actually pick whichever ones we want, but I'm going to pick the numbers 0, 1, and 2. I think they'll be most useful to me. Okay. Now, after zero years, this is the first row on the table. right? It's the start of the first year. No time has actually elapsed, so that's why I'm calling it zero. What's the balance in the account? Yeah, $2,400, right? That's where I'm at. And if you recall, just looking at the simple interest first, every year you get the $144 of interest on top, on top, on top, every time, right? So I'm going to put in these new values over here. Now just like we did in the review, right? I want you to look at this, and I want you to help me think through. What is the equation that binds these two together? Years, number of years, and the balance of the account. How am I going to work this out? How did we work it out last time? We need two pieces of information. Two pieces of information. I will need the principal. What does the principal represent in this in question? In the initial. It's the beginning, right? If you recall, I think it was Brent who said, it's when x, that's what our first line is, it's when x is equal to zero, right? There's your intercept. So this here, right, this is going to be our, in y equals mx plus b, that's going to be b, right? Do you agree with that? That's where you begin. What's the other thing we wanted? In a straight line. Your line is set and uh, a gradient, right? How do we work out gradient from these numbers here? 144. Yeah, it's this thing here, right? And we actually constructed the table so we know exactly what that amount is every time. Do you, do you get that? So this gap here, this 144, that's the gradient I'm after. Yeah? Is that okay? Okay, so here's what I want you to do. We're, I want to see a picture of this, okay? So now I'm ready for you to go here. Okay. Now, some of you have used this before. Um, I want you to go to that address. And before you do anything with this, I want you to do this. This will help our graph look easy to read. Um, go to the address. I'll zoom in in a second once you've um, all gone to the address so that you can see these little bits of details here a little more clearly. And we're going to get, because, you know, we've got time to draw a graph. We're going to get a computer to draw this graph for us. Actually, we're going to get it to draw a couple of graphs for us. Okay? So would you go to the address? It'll load up like a, a grid line and all those kinds of things. And then there's this, um, there's this wrench in the top right-hand corner. Okay. Once you go there, you'll get this. And I'm going to zoom in now. Once you hit the... Um, the ridge, I want you to change all of the numbers so that um, you can see there's a minus 2 and a 30, a minus 1,000 and a 10,000. They won't be that right now. I want you to change those numbers. Click on them, adjust them with your keyboard so that you have those numbers. So once you've done that, it should look like this. Does it look like this? You'll know you've done it because you'll see 10,000 right up there. Yeah, do you see it? And you should see 10, 20, and it might just cut off before you actually... I don't think I can see 30. There you go. Does it look okay? <laughs> okay, now remember, we just went to all this effort to take this table and get the values out of it to make this into a straight line. I know what M is, I know what B is, so this should be Y equals, and I'm going to go M, X plus B. So there's M, and there's B, 2400, yeah? So up there in the top left, you can, oops, there we go. You can hit in there and you can actually just type through. I don't know, you can actually just do it on your keyboard if you like. I'm going to go y equals, and you may want to drop this down. This is actually um, worth putting onto your piece of paper along where you have your simple interest table. This is the equation that describes everything happening with that simple interest. So let's write that in. Oh, so now it's yours. Okay, do you have a line? Does it look like that? Yeah, happy times? 
I will I will use it as your own. Okay. I'm actually going to do this. Okay, do you see it? Yep. I just made it thicker on my notebook. Okay. So what do you see? What do you see? This is a straight line, right? And what it represents is what is the balance as time passes, as you go across years, right? And you can see, this is why they call it flat line, flat rate interest, right? It's just going up at the same rate all the way along. So it's a, yeah, it's flat, okay? Uh, I'm gonna ask you to do one more thing here. Um, I'm actually gonna ask you to go back up the top here, up in the left. And um, if you've got the on-screen keyboard, I actually want you to, on the right bottom left-hand corner where it says ABC, just hit that. Um, it's your, you haven't changed your scale. Changed your scale. This thing. Once you um, have got this open, I want you to go right into the middle, and you'll see here a pair of curly braces. That's actually what they're called. I love that their name is curly braces. They look like that. Okay. Once you hit that, come back to. If you hit one, two, three again, you'll come back to this original keyboard. And all I want you to put in on top of this is. Inside those curly braces, x is greater than zero. Now, once you do that, I want you to tell me, number one, what it means, and number two, why am I doing it? What does it mean? x is greater than zero. What is x here? What's our horizontal axis? Have a look. I have it right there in my table, and so do you. Which one of these is x? Years. It's years, right? It's time, okay? So why have I bothered to say x is greater than zero? What's the significance of that? It's because time is like, you can't say, oh, well, in the past, before I put my money into the bank account, how much was it worth, right? That doesn't make sense. So time has to be positive here. So now you can see your line, it starts from zero, and off it goes, it grows and grows and grows. So far, so good? Okay, here's where the real magic happens, right? I want you to come back to your sheet. Okay, now on your sheet, I hope you remember what we did right at the end of yesterday's lesson is that we said, you know what, this is nice, it gives us the right answers, but it kind of is slow and inefficient, it's not the best way to do things, right? So that's why we developed this guy. Do you remember this, right? This is the compound interest formula, formula yeah? And it's so much more efficient. So, is Benny heated up? Yes, she is. Can I, can I go You're not trouble. <laughs> So, just coming back. You remember compound interest, right? It is describing the same kind of thing, but interest is given on interest and given on interest, right? So I want us to take this same thing and notice here, I can write a similar kind of equation for it, right? I'm gonna have a y equals, but the numbers are gonna be arranged differently, right? What's the principle again? What do we start with? 2,400, so that's the P at the front, right? Then I've got one plus, what was the rate again? What's the rate? The rate, think about it. The rate is a percentage, yeah? So it's 6%, but I'm trying to get into the habit of writing in decimals, so I'm gonna write 0 0.06. Okay, here's the really cool thing, right? If I say N here, right, I actually want a specific number of years, but this graph, this can tell us all the number of years. Which letter is it again? Which letter signifies the years? X. It's x, right? This is the horizontal axis. So if I put an x up there, right? This thing here, instead of simple interest, will tell us compound interest and will give us a picture. So now that you have that in your head, let's have a look at this. Again, we're going to form an equation, but this time it's gonna look like this, okay? The first bit's easy, you just go y equals. You got your 2400 out the front. And you can see there's brackets over here on the left hand side, right? Once you hit one bracket, it'll end it for you. One, yeah, plus 0 0.06. Now, yes. I'm up to this point, I need to do this little bit here. If you've looked at your calculator, like your actual calculator, you'll recognize this is the button you want, right? This is the power button. So once you hit that, I need to put in the number of years. And then you get this. 
what's going on here? Now, by the way, there's one more thing I should do. Just like we did before, time only makes sense when it's positive, right? So I'm actually going to go back to the curly braces um, on the ABC. Go X. I'm glad you feel that way. It's greater than zero. This is what it ought to look like. Okay? Do you see what's going on? Do you see how I've done this? Raise your hand if you've got a similar looking picture on your screen. Hands up. Hands up straight. Okay, most people take your hands down. Who's still... Yeah, but like, shit, this is his See, I have a suggestion. I was like, I've done something wrong. Actually, you're joking. It's all a joke. I just made that whole sentence up. Just Go check the email then. That's a really good idea. There's no B. Have you done this? You're not finished yet. You've created the zero. Finish it off. What we want is for I want positive values of x, positive values of time. Right? So use the greater than symbol. This one, this one, that one, and zero, and then the line will come back. Okay, so just step back for a second. Great, we have a pretty picture now, but what does it mean? Okay? Um, that's really sad. Why? How do you conclude that off this? Okay, think about it. It's like, it doesn't go on zero. Wait, that's this letter. Yeah, yeah. You know the one, the bracket near the x, the power x? Yep, this one. Wait, what does it say? It says x is greater than zero. Lions could have been together again. Like they met once. <laughs> <laughs> when they're not You're working. so emotional. Okay. Mathematics is a great, it, it make a great job like, story. Say that again. That's a great question. Let's think about that for a second. Okay, so what does this mean? What does it mean? Uh, what you're seeing here is a picture of exponential growth. That's what this is, okay? That's what mathematicians call it. It's getting bigger and bigger but it's doing that faster and faster. Why is it getting faster? Why is it doing that? That's right, like the amount of interest, the interest itself is getting bigger and bigger. So this gap is sort of widening and widening faster and faster. So now I want you to open up, you can keep that open, but go to exercise 6D, 6D. Okay. What you will see is a series of graphs just like this one. Well, mainly, mainly the purple one. You're going to see these, right? And now I want you to understand, I want you to have in your mind, right? Here is a simple interest graph, right? It's just tracking you up at the same rate all the way along, okay? What compound interest is doing, and as soon as you have a look, I'll just show you. Okay, there you go. Can you see that one? Does it look familiar, right? This is exactly what, except the thing is, you guys can generate this yourself. You don't need to just have to trust, oh, okay, I guess that's what it looks like. You can see why it is.